Look, I'm, a, I'm really interested to hear, uh, just because it's such an iconic piece of New Zealand history, you were in the squad for the for the underarm game, but not on the field. Is that what you're saying? You were yeah. on that tour? Yeah. Can you tell me about, like, obviously, now it was McKechnie who was batting? Brian McKechnie was facing. Oh, look, here we go. Let's have a, let's oh, have, have a look. Let's have a look. At a, young Trevor, a young Trevor Chapel. And Chapel was the bowling. The youngest of the three. Uh, but he's not the captain, eh? His brother no, was no, the captain? Yes. Greg, Greg was the captain. Yep. Ian, Ian had retired. Yep. So and when are we? What year are we? 80, 83, 84? Yeah. Is that what this year is about? 83? Before uh, before that, 81. Oh, was it that? I don't know. Brian McKechnie, who hadn't hit a six in club cricket for about five years. Yeah. And, and even the crowd. So this is, this is at the, which, is it SCG? Which Melbourne. Melbourne. Melbourne, okay, MCG. Yeah, yeah. Bruce Edgar, uh, Edgar carried his bat right through the innings. Obviously, I, I heard a story about Bruce Edgar that um, his his hand he didn't quite have his hands right on his bat. John Wright. Oh, was that right? And they Wright. stuck his glove yeah, to it. And his then thing. Stephen Bock did the same thing. And then he he knew he'd have a good innings. Then he came in with a swollen ankle or something because he was staying nice and close to his pad. <laughs> anyway, I want to I really want to know because obviously these guys came off the field and you would have been in the in the changing rooms. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Tell me what what what's happening. Tell me the feeling. Tell me the vibe. Tell me the words. Right. The, I think I think we had to score something like five runs to to win the game. So McKechnie had to hit a six. So, and and Greg Chappell was under ter- terrible pressure in those days in Australia. To be the Australian captain must have been the best thing, proud, but also the worst thing. Yes. Yeah. They were at you the whole time. He was tired. He wasn't that well. They desperately needed to win the game. They would lost a, a, a close game uh, earlier on. Yeah. So he, he said, bowl under him. Brian McKinney said, there he is, saying, what, what do you mean, bowl under? What are you talking about? That can't be right. Ro- uh, Rod Marsh saying, no, don't yeah, do he it. Was, don't he do was it. Because that's the thing, don't hey, do it. Part, of the, part if not most of the Australian team was like, nah, this is not, you literally, this. literally, this is not cricket. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and Trevor Chapel was saying, I'm lucky to be in this team. Because yeah. he was lucky to be in the team. He right. wasn't a certainty. He, wasn't, he didn't play for a long career. We didn't have a long one after this. Um, <laughs> and, and thinking, how am I going to do this? So he bowls underarm. McKechnie rightly just blocks. I mean, people dream up things. He could have flicked it up off his foot and hit it for six. Colt, he couldn't hit the ball to the boundary on the best of days. So yeah. it was quite a good response from Colt. It was just throw the ball away, meaning I'm disgusted, we'll walk off. Bruce Edgar, had, had, as I said, he, he, he'd opened the innings, so he'd batted right through. He got a ton, 102 or something, did yeah, I say? Yeah, and that was basically the end. You'll see, I think, Jeff Howarth rightly uh, goes onto the field to... What's the word? Remonstrate with the with the umpires, which is too okay. late. I mean, oh, hold on, this is where they stop and say, hold on, we might we might. And that's Marshy saying, "Sorry, boys, sorry. that was not cricket." Jeff Howe is saying, "What on earth? We've never heard of this in our lives." And the umpire, quite rightly, saying, "It's in the rules." Yeah, it, it, I mean, everyone now can say, "Well, that's ridiculous," but the ridiculous things have happened in sport and they learn from ridiculous things and that's why they change the rules. Well, it's a bit like, I mean, it's not that it's necessarily the same kind of sportsmanship, but there was a while that, and Australia did it as well, John Eels at the rugby, they'd lift him in front of the goalposts to oh, try yes, and catch. Yes, they did. And yes. then, because it was in the rules, and then the next year, it wasn't allowed well, the, because they changed the rules. Well, the netball girls who who, who lifted the, yeah. to, to put the ball in the, in the yeah. Hook, yeah. Right. Anyway, that was, the, that was the New Zealand team. And what happened in the dressing room yeah, was quite us. interesting because... It was like you could see there the, the players were stunned, the Australian yep. fielders were stunned, and two batsmen out there were stunned, and the two umpires probably didn't show it, but mm. they thought, what the hell's going on? But in the dressing room, I remember uh, people in the dressing room were having a cup of tea, watching the end of the game, they've had their bats. I yep. mean, it was a gentleman's game yeah, still. Yeah. Well, the cup, the cup hit the wall, the concrete wall, and it just absolutely shattered, and, and pieces of Crockery flew all over the room. <laughs> Guys, there was, the language was just out, out of control. And it was like we were, when I say stunned, but we were also angry mm. immediately. And it seemed like such a big thing. It was, we cannot believe it, that dirty you know, the, the The words were worse than that. Mm. Um, someone came in from Australian cricket to apologise. This is perhaps 10 minutes after the game. Like management level sort oh, of thing? Yeah, like, yeah, like okay. the chairman. I, yeah. God only knows what his name was. But um, And there were things like, you know, go away, yeah, you're the, just like it. The worst words. And it was funny because I can think back now, and I, I think it was all sort of over in half an hour, really. Right. 
it became a huge thing back here, Mr. Muldoon, talking about they're, they're, they're aptly dressed in yellow and all this. <laughs> and then when we got home, we were heroes because they cheated. They cheated against us. When you think about it, as I said before, Cody was never going to hit it for six. Even if he'd bowled a normal ball, he was never going to hit it for six. It's a bloody big boundary in Melbourne. So it was so unlikely you could ever hit that ball for six. It's just... It's funny how the, the country got onto it because the country supports, always do, underdogs, don't they? Yeah. We were talking about that before yeah. because the Auckland rugby, you know, that's yeah. the thing. We support anyone down there. Anyone playing Auckland. Yeah. Yeah, because we were actually the under, most of them are always underdogs. Yep. This is Canterbury. And, and the, the country got right in behind it. The players had lost it uh, completely. It had gone from our minds. It wasn't a big thing. Oh, really? Okay. No, it was. It was, it was like... Apart from being patted on the back when you came in through the airport, mm. yeah, our heroes. We lost, for God's sake. But, yeah. but our heroes. You and know. you lost with the team you were opposing technically playing within the rules. Yeah. Yeah. It's it wasn't it wasn't as big a thing in the players' minds mm-hmm. until of course when you get home to your hometown and people would say, Oh, you poor bug they cheated against you. you you somehow it built you back up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gave you attention, well, that's what yeah. it really was. And, and when you're a young sports person, in most cases you like the attention. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're playing the game, it, it's a funny thing, you don't like to admit it at the time, but when you're retired you have time to reflect on these things. I think we all liked a wee bit of attention. Mm. We like to go uh, to the supermarket and, and, and from the aisle, do you think that's Warren Lee's over there? I think it is, Mum. Kids, can I have an autograph? That sort of thing. And, and, and you, you might make out when you get home, oh, God, I'm not going back to the supermarket, dude, because there's always <laughs> but then, somewhere. But then you go, oh, I forgot the butter. That's I better right. sit back I'm, down I'm again. Just, <laughs> and, and, and sometimes when you're that age, you're almost disappointed <laughs> mm. if you go to the pub or the supermarket or, or the movies and no one recognises you. You think, what the hell, have they forgotten me? You know, it's a... It's, so the underarm kind of gave you guys uh, raised the profile it even sort of more. Did. So yeah, yeah, it did. what about like the like you said you guys kind of forgot it, um, but what about the next time you played Australia? Was there a little something more no. there, or was no. literally completely gone? No, I, I think it was gone. I think um, when, as we mentioned before, when Southland played Auckland or Otago played Auckland at rugby, yeah. uh, one team was the little brother and one was the rich big brother, right? Yeah. The older brother. And whenever we played. Australia, even if we'd beaten them the day before, yep. I think we were still the little brother. That's probably a part of the reason it resonated so much because not only did we have a chance technically yeah, we, we of beating in. the big brother, yeah, yeah. they then played dirty yeah. within the rules. Like It makes me think you get, um, you know, you can have a ruling in cricket now which is bringing the game into disrepute, even something that's within the rules. Do you did anything like that happen to Australia? Did they actually get any kind of slap on the wrist? Because whilst it was within the rules, oh. it was pretty. It was pretty. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. pretty ugly. Yeah, I think the Australian public, yeah. cr- cricket public in, in general, really um, disliked what they saw. Mm. There, were, there were the occasional people. Ha ha ha! That was good. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there were, you'd always get that. There were a few of them in the pub yeah. would say that. But yeah, I, I think it, it, it had a. It, it had a telling blow on the, on the Chapel family. I'm, I'm pretty wow. sure of that. I mean, Trevor Chapel, um, he still they they still mix. Brian McKechnie and Trevor Chapel still mix. Right. They, wouldn't they be great to have them both in the same place at, yeah. a, at a function and, and have them speaking? So you can see how it, it, it made something for Brian McKechnie over the years, I guess, and even Bruce Edgar, who was batting with them. Yep. I, I certainly made the most of it when I was talking at the <laughs> local Lions Club or something. I mean, it gave me something to fill in five minutes. And then people in the audience, did they really? You know, things like that. They go, ooh, we didn't know. Who who threw that cup you were talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, it, it's sometimes you, you sort of wonder whether, whether the, you can cover things up from the public. Uh, I mean, so we, we sort of led it on a wee bit. I mean, yeah, okay. the interview... You when played you, up to it a bit. Yeah, a little bit like that. So when, when you get back and someone wants to interview you, and they, they talk about that. They, of course, you wanted them to say, what about the underarm? Yeah. Because that, that, that made it made so sort what, of false So what you're saying is I have fallen into your well-timed trap by a asking you about it. A little bit. It doesn't matter. 